I mean, this is a historic day. A lot of firsts. It's the first yep. time Trump's mugshot yep, uh, will exactly. be taken, we believe. First time uh, a trial could be televised, because in Georgia, this one could actually be on TV, we're being told. Uh, and the first time a president has been charged with an offense typically associated with mobsters. So whether you, you love or hate Trump, there's, there's really no denying this is a historic moment. Oh, completely. And, and the attorney, Willis, has been very firm about this. I'm not going to treat former President Trump any differently than any other defendant that has been charged in my in my jurisdiction. So that's why it's exactly to your point. There are all the, these all these historic events surrounding the bond, surrounding the mugshot. The the fact that there's going to be cameras, we've seen cameras in the courtroom go a little sideways, so it's going to be even more interesting in how restrictive this particular judge will be if and when this actually goes to trial, which it's already set, it's already been scheduled for October 23rd. Mitch, uh, Mercedes brought up the cameras. That that does seem to change the dynamic here because the other times we've seen Trump in court, it's been sketches, it's the reporters running out to tell us what he looked like. I mean, cameras were kind of entering Trump's world here when, when cameras are involved. No, I, I think you've got it exactly backwards. Trump is entering a world where he's not going to be in charge of the cameras. A good he point. is going to be an object not the person making things happen and i don't think that the cameras are going to do him any favors here mitch what do you make of the the, the lawyer change um he replaced drew uh findling his attorney in, in georgia with stephen sado uh really at the last minute is that unusual what do you make of that so becoming a criminal defendant is like going out to sea when you know a hurricane's coming once you're out there you, there really is not an opportunity to make changes he needs to be comfortable with the attorney that he's going to have. And so far in the Georgia cases, the people who he's been selecting are real practitioners, not people who um, in some of the other cases seem to be uh, walking press releases. Mercedes, when we talk about the case, they're all clumped together right now, sure. all of the defendants. If you're Trump's attorney, are you trying to separate him from that? Do you want to separate the cases or is it better to keep them all together? Well, you certainly want to separate them because obviously the jury is going to look. There must be something here when you have this many defendants and it's a criminal enterprise. And this is a very broad statute under RICO. The local statute is much broader than it is on the federal level. Intent's not even something that's really focused on. It really is you have a group of loosely individuals, loosely a group of individuals that are furthering a crime, a crime of some sort of crime. The crime here, of course, that they're trying to overthrow the election. But at least give the, the narrative that it's been that it was a fraudulent election. So with that, if I were just attorneys, we don't want 19 defendants in this courtroom because a jury is going to see it's embedded in the statute that you have a group of yeah. individuals and now you have this entire group of individuals. And oh, by the way, there's all these conversations between these individuals and representations and the narratives that this was a fraudulent election. All of that is going to obviously stir the jury to look and say there has to be something here. Obviously, there's a criminal element and ultimately lead to a conviction. It also just seems like it'd be confusing for the jury to have that many people all on trial at one time. And how many finger pointing? Because right. you know, this right. is this was the strategy behind Attorney Willis. She's thinking to herself, I'm bringing all these co-conspirators in, unlike some of the other indictments you've seen. And with that is a lot of pressure. They're all facing up to 20 years in prison. That's really significant. You look at this list and you think to yourself, someone's going to turn. Who might that person be? Yeah, and pressure. Talk about pressure when I mean, we're dealing with a former president of the United States. Uh, Blake, I want to bring you in because something interesting uh, happened in D.C. The Republican-led House Judiciary Committee has now opened an investigation into the district attorney in Fulton County over whether uh, her prosecution is politically motivated. Uh, so so they're, they're already going in that direction. What have you learned about that, Blake? Look, it is uh, the Republican-led Congress at this point, and in that committee, it is the head of that committee is Jim Jordan, a supporter of the president, who is uh, essentially coming to the backing here of the leader of the Republican Party, right? The, the 45th president of the United States polling shows uh, that he, of course, is, is the leader in the primary here by far and away. Republicans have real questions, though, about, about Fonnie Willis and her role in all of this. Remember, the, Remember, basically, what we've heard from, from Republicans out of Washington is that this is a political persecution, that there's a two-tier justice system, um, and, and they've supported the former president, by and large, for the most part, congressional Republicans throughout. And so what we've seen from, from Jim Jordan and his committee is, 
is looking into Fonnie Willis and all of this. And it's really, Brian, just the next chapter uh, or an additional chapter in what is now the next legal case for, for Donald Trump. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.